Well, it's time for our prophecy update. Again, every Sunday we set aside a few minutes and look at what the Bible says about what will take place in the last days prior to the return of Jesus Christ. We happen to believe that the signs are clear and that we are indeed living in the last moments of world history as we know it. We look primarily at Israel as God's prophetic clock. That's really what time it is in Bible prophecy, if you can say it that way. Uh, this is going to be today part two of a prophecy series titled The Perfect Prophetic Storm. The world stage is really being set and it's coming together all of these events to form what I'll call the perfect storm of Bible prophecy. Last week we looked at and saw what the re-election of Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad means related to Islam's role in the last days. We looked at three specific prophecies and how it appears that Iran with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad as the president uh, is seemingly fulfilling the prophecies that were told about in the Bible. Uh, who would have thunk this last week? My goodness, if you've been watching the news, you've no doubt heard of the massive violence that has erupted protesting Ahmadinejad's re-election. It's believed that the election was rigged and that Mir Hussein Mousavi had actually won the election and defeated Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Uh, now, uh, the reality on the ground is that it's not about a rigged election anymore. It's now about the overthrowing of a repressive Iranian regime. During Friday prayers, the Iran's uh, supreme leader, the Ayatollah Khamenei, threatened protesters in an attempt to end the uprising. Uh, the death toll, of course, is rising. It's getting worse by the hour. Hundreds of thousands of Iranians are filling the streets of Tehran, demanding an end to the clerical dictatorship and Ahmadinejad's rule, which for the last 30 years, since 1979, has been the rule and the government there. Uh, it's not just in Iran that people are protesting, but actually it's all over the world now, and in of all places, Los Angeles. Uh, there are apparently many Iranians in Los Angeles. Uh, they have a nickname for Los Angeles. They call it Tehran Jeles. <laughs> so uh, they're protesting there as well, in the name of freedom, really. I think that uh, not only did we underestimate uh, what this would become after Ahmadinejad was pronounced the victor, but I think we may also be underestimating the propensity for this to impact the entire world. Uh, understand that this could uh, mean higher uh, gas prices. Uh, this could mean tremendous and unspeakable unrest uh, throughout the Middle East. I mean, you're dealing with, you know, and we, and I know that I'm guilty of this too, you know, I, you know, talk about Ahmadinejad as being crazy. Listen, this is not just a crazy man. He is a very intelligent man, but he's also a demon-possessed man. So, you know, the Apostle Paul said, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. So I really believe that what we're dealing with here, and our battle is not against flesh and blood but against the principalities and the powers of darkness, the wickedness in high places, as the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, says to the Ephesian church. But I believe that we're just now about to see how this is all going to play out. And it's going to be interesting in the days and weeks that follow. I want to encourage you, as often as the Lord reminds you, to pray for the Iranian people. Uh, let me go on record and say, God loves the Iranian people. God loves Muslims. There are untold thousands upon thousands of Iranians, mostly young. I think one statistic I heard is that 60% of Iran uh, are under the age of 30. 
That's amazing to me. But untold thousands upon thousands of the Iranians are coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's things like this that are bringing this to pass. So pray for the Iranian people. Now, I don't want to talk about this today, <laughs> though I just did. I want to talk about our second part that is coming together to form this perfect prophetic storm, and it's the North Korea factor. Uh, by the way, in case you hadn't heard, North Korea is planning to fire a missile at Hawaii on the 4th of July. Yeah, happy 4th of July to you. <laughs> Maybe don't get the barbecue out just yet. <laughs> May not need it, I don't know. The Associated Press on Friday the 19th had this article, U.S. boosts Hawaii defense to counter North Korea threat. The United States says it has deployed anti-missile defenses around Hawaii following reports that North Korea is preparing to fire its most advanced ballistic missiles in that direction to coincide with the U.S. Independence Day holiday next month. U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates said Thursday that the military has set up additional defenses around Hawaii consisting of a ground-based mobile missile system and radar system nearby. Together, they could shoot an incoming missile in midair. Without telegraphing what we will do, I would just say we are in a good position. <laughs> Easy for you to say, you're on the mainland, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is Robert Gates. We are in a good position, should it be necessary, to protect Americans and American territory, Gates told reporters in Washington. Okay, here's the question. How does North Korea factor in to the overall geopolitical equation of Bible prophecy? I'm so glad you asked. To answer that, I want to quote Joel Rosenberg, uh, who recently spoke at the Epicenter Prophecy Conference in San Diego, California. It was on April 4th of this year. Uh, by the way, I want to uh, mention to you that we have been praying as a church here at Calvary Chapel Kaneohe about doing a prophecy conference here on Oahu. The Lord had put this uh, on Frank uh, Toyama's heart a while back, and then he approached me and said, what do you think about uh, doing something like this? And what he didn't know is that the Lord had already gone before him and put it on my heart as well. So we started planning, praying, and preparing to, you know, see where the Lord would lead with a prophecy conference here on Oahu. Well, at the, pro at the, con the pastor's conference back uh, two, three weeks now, I uh, spoke with uh, Pastor Bill Stonebreaker and also Pastor Tim Newman about it and have been, you know, keeping them apprised of what we were praying about and wanting to do. And Tim Newman had said to me that David Hawking, whom he has come every year, had mentioned to him that he could get any speaker that we wanted. Well, back in uh, February, I had emailed Mark Hitchcock, author of the most recent book, The Late Great United States, and asked him if he would be willing to come to Hawaii and speak. Of course, you know, it's not hard getting guys to come to Oahu. Uh, if it was Ohio, I think it would be different, but they, they just, they, see, they feel like they're led. Yeah, I, I think that's the Lord. <laughs> Did you say o Oahu? Yeah, I think the, I bear witness. Yes, Lord. Anyway, <laughs> Mark Hitchcock emailed me back right away. Then uh, Martin had emailed Hal Lindsey and asked him, would you, uh, you know, uh, consider and pray about coming to Hawaii and, uh, you know, for a prophecy conference? Of course, he emails back, and it's been many years since he was here. And, of course, he said, yes, I would be very interested. And then uh, David Hawking told Pastor Tim Newman that um, I can draw from a pool of speakers like Tim LaHaye, uh, Thomas Ice, and he just started listing all of these uh, people. So I started getting a little excited, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Like, so excited, I, I couldn't sleep that night. I'm laying in bed going, wow, this would be so cool. So initially, we're thinking, okay, you know, we'll rent this, you know, place. It seats, you know, 1,200.